A question that I've gotten a lot about traveling as a solo female is safety. I will say that this is something that is like a big topic. It's something that uh, is always like talked about when people like find out that you are solo traveling, especially if it's people that like have never done it before. People always say how unsafe it is and how um, they have all these fears and worries that maybe they've seen on the media that discourages them from stepping out of their box and just kind of living their life um, out of fear. So I wanted to make a video about just different things that I've done that helps me with uh, feeling safe while traveling. I'm a big believer that safety and crime, it doesn't discriminate. It's um, yes, you have to be mindful about like where you're going and um, the way that you're behaving. But I do believe that you can find crime and you can find um, safety issues, whether you are in Mexico or whether you are in Dallas, Texas. There's just crime, not good people are everywhere. Um, and so I often kind of laugh when people are like, oh, you're out of the country alone. And um, I always kind of ask, so you suggest that I be in the States where there's a lot of crime everywhere every day. <laughs> Um, and people don't ever really consider that, that they think that uh, it's so dangerous everywhere outside of the States. And in reality, a lot of that is media based. Um, so I wanted to just make a video about how I have felt traveling alone and things that I'm doing to stay safe um, and just my perspective on it. So I will say firstly that uh, the two places that I've traveled alone have been Thailand and also Mexico. Obviously, those are two totally different energies environments. Thailand is known for being a very safe place for single females to travel solo. Um, and then you have Mexico, which based off of like the media and the news, they will have you thinking that Mexico is like the most unsafe place on the, in the world. Um, and I will say now that I've traveled in both places solo, I uh, just have some different like views, opinions on it. So I... Um, so there's a handful of things that I do whenever I am traveling. So for instance, um, when I first traveled alone, when I was in Thailand, I went to a retreat where I knew that I would be meeting people over like a course of several weeks. So I immediately had friends after, after like a week of being there, I had like a community of people, even if I didn't know them very well, I knew that I was going to have that, um, community. And then also, uh, so that was something that was like really important. And then when I traveled to Mexico, I didn't have really that sense of community. I had connected with a couple of people on Instagram that I knew were living in the specific city I was going to, but I didn't really know them when we weren't really friends. So I kind of did research before I went into, went to town, um, to Sayulita, Mexico to just kind of be aware of people that were expats in the community, people that were from the US or from Canada that were living in the community that um, I knew that seemed like cool people that if I needed to like ask questions or anything or get like recommendations from them, I could. So I think probably like the main gist of traveling solo was like building some sort of a community, whether it be through a retreat center, whether it be through social media, um, or maybe even like these Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups. There's a lot of WhatsApp and Facebook groups out there for any specific area that has a lot of expats. And uh, what you'll find in these expat communities is that um, a lot of people are traveling solo. So a lot of people will have your back and, um, there's really like a sense of community within the expat world which is very helpful when you're traveling alone so one of the things one of the main things i have done whenever i was focusing on or one of the main things i've done whenever i was traveling solo was having some sort of a community in some form or fashion um, and i did that like i said connecting through expat communities on whatsapp and facebook through instagram and also through retreats another thing i will say that i have done with um traveling alone is that especially when I was like now that I'm like in Mexico I intentionally got places to stay that were within walking distance to like the main area of town 
So that way I wouldn't have to be taking taxis like late at night by myself or if I was walking home, I wasn't like walking through the dark by myself. And that's something that I think has been very much a game changer. It's just making sure that wherever you do go, that you are in like a good walkable area. I will also note, I personally don't drink and I don't really go out late at night. Um, so I'm not really big in like the nightlife scene. Um, I don't drink alcohol, so I don't have to worry about like getting too drunk or getting home after being drinking or someone putting something in my drink. That's something that's totally eliminated just by me not drinking. Um, I still have gone out occasionally to like bars or to like events after, after the sun goes down, but I'm not often like out and about in the nightlife scene unless I have somebody that I know and trust with me. Um, which leads me to another point. I think that something to consider is that when you are out in these communities and you meet expats, you meet other people that are traveling solo, it's easy to trust people because you also feel like they're alone too um, and that you guys are in this together. But I will note that it is very important to just always keep your guard up whenever you are traveling solo. Even if you do meet another solo traveler, it's probably not in your best interest to uh, announce to people, even if they are solo as well, that you are solo. Um, probably just not the best practice to do that. Um, I will say also, um, some of the other things that I've done to feel and keep safe is that um, I always have my location on with my friends and family. So like my parents are always able to see like, okay, she's not in her hometown right now. She's actually over here. Um, and that's something that I think has made myself and my friends and family feel safer is that they're able to see my location and know where I'm at. So I definitely suggest that you have somebody back home that you love, trust, care about you to have your location. I also recently saw um, a girl on like a traveling Facebook group talk about anytime she goes on dates that she actually sends um, all of like her dates contact info, like a photo of where she's at, like where she's on a date. So if she's sitting at like a restaurant, she sends a photo of that restaurant. She sends a photo of the dates contact information. And she also sends a photo um, of, I guess, her date. So that was something that was like kind of interesting to me, even like sending a photo of where that person is like having dinner, uh, just so that she sends those photos to somebody that she trusts at home. So if for some reason she were to come up missing, um, it would be kind of a quick way to pull together the story pieces of like who she was with and where she was. So I thought that was something that was pretty interesting. but. Overall, I will say that like feeling safe in uh, while traveling solo has really boiled down to the fact that like I always am somewhere where it's walkable and I feel safe walking. I don't go really out after dark or drink. And I also have just built community very quickly wherever I'm at. So um, those three things have really helped me feel safe while traveling. And I think a lot of people feel whenever you're traveling solo that you're just 100% solo. And the thing is, is that when you travel solo, you actually end up meeting a lot of people. And it's really easy to build and connect and make friends. So, um, so traveling solo is not all that scary. It's actually really liberating and makes you feel extremely independent and you get to enjoy and do things exactly the way that you want to do them and i think oftentimes people don't realize that uh that when you're traveling with like friends family you're on like a joint schedule of what everybody else wants to do for the most part um and you don't really get that freedom to just like explore and live life in a new a new place so i really enjoyed solo traveling Although sometimes it does uh, get lonely and sometimes you do wish that you were like sharing those experiences with other people. I think that's what it's why it's really important to build community whenever you're traveling solo because you do have people to go on excursions with or go hiking with um, and uh, you just get to build friendships and make memories with people all over the world. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to do a little video about how I've built uh, or how I have felt safe while traveling solo and just share that some of these places that we think are super, super unsafe, um, a lot of it's just like media based. And it also depends on like where you're located. For instance, where I'm located in Mexico, from what I've been told is like the safest state in Mexico. 
Um, people forget that Mexico is an entire country, and that's like saying that one city in the U.S. determines uh, the entire safety of an entire country, and that's just not true. So I think as long as you do your research, um, talk to people that have lived in that area or traveled to that area, I think as long as you do your research, you'll kind of know how to look out for yourself because every different area does have different things to consider. Um, like there are certain places that you wouldn't want to walk around with like jewelry on or you wouldn't want to walk around with your phone in your hand um, just because you'll have people that will come and snatch it out of your, off you or out of your hand. Um, so those are just kind of things that you figure out while you are doing your research about where to travel. It's just like good tips and tricks. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about people traveling and uh, like men traveling in Colombia and how like going on dating apps and going on dates with Colombian local Colombian women a lot of times those men find themselves into trouble <laughs> um, so for instance if I were to be a man and travel there I might not do that so um, I think just doing your research building community having a safe location of where you're staying all really determines how safe you feel while you're traveling but obviously as I mentioned crime and safety they don't discriminate it doesn't matter where you are you could be in the safest place in the u.s or you could be in the most dangerous place um, in the world and um, you're gonna there's potentially going to be risk so hopefully this helps uh let me know in the comments uh, where is the safest place that you've ever traveled or that you're wanting to travel um or vice versa where is like a place that you felt the most not safe. Um, I would just be interested to find out in the comments. So comment below your answers and I'll talk to you in the next video.